Morning everybody, uh, Wednesday morning. I'm pleased to report that we managed to get uh, the combine going in some wheat last night. We just did uh, just a couple of hours, uh, came in at 16% but we've made a start. Um, and I just wanted to revisit this field. Uh, this is a field of uh, rape stubble. Uh, it's on the, on the far side of HS2. It was the later cut of our rape. And one of the reasons for the delay was we were struggling with thistles in the crop. We had sprayed it off and we were just waiting for the glyphosate to take effect. Certainly uh, weeds are, or well, contamination is a significant element to consider in a regenerative system. Last night in the wheat we were battling meadow brome this, um, and obviously here we were battling thistles. So time will tell how significant that is but it is certainly a consideration to be aware of. So as you can see we finished mole ploughing this yesterday. Um, not too bad, the occasional clump where the mole ploughers hit a some residue and dragged down the field, but in general not too bad. Some clover has made it through the glyphosate, which is good to see. Uh, this has had this hasn't had a stubble rake. This has just had one pass with the moor. So this has already been planted with cover crop. The undulations don't seem too much but it's quite painful for the when you're on the sprayer so what we've done is we've planted the cover crop and then mole ploughed so that uh, we've got relatively good placement before the mole plough goes through so that's our strategy here I think we will probably if we get the opportunity we'll come through with the rolls although with our staffing situation we are quite tight at the moment so the plan is to concentrate on harvest for obvious reasons but uh, more probably later today uh, the field we're in has got our yen uh, trial it's also got our uh, organic live wheat trial so I will try and grab some footage of that later today so one thing I am concerned about is headland or at least I should say tram line damage like this. This was done by uh, the compost spreading and it does make me wonder whether we're better off just concentrating on cover crops. Now these strips are quite interesting because you could view them one of two ways. It's very, you know, very ne in a negative way that uh, it's damage or it's lost crop and you know you haven't been able to get yield or the other way of looking at it is that um, they really show you where the damage is it's quite noticeable just how clean the middle is versus the tram line and they've received no different treatment so my conclusion would be just shows you that weeds only grow when they get the opportunity I've like got a bit of a wet spot here um, and that the trick is by improving soil quality to remove all chances for them to grow so here we have another example, nice and clean. This is a low input crop, so it's had no nitrogen, nice and clean. And then you've got a patch, that's on a tram line, a bit of an open patch. Certainly I think one thing to consider is not having any uh, tram lines going forward. And uh, just for your benefits, let's see. So we're averaging 6.7 tonnes a hectare and that, that, that moisture is pretty accurate. We've uh, compared it to the moisture meter this morning. So it's all going in quite nicely. Long may this continue. 
So I uh, guess we've owned this field for about 20 years and we're, it's not very big. Attached to a big block that we bought and up against some houses with a difficult relationship. So what we did was we fenced this off and we've had livestock in here for um, I don't know, probably five years. No, not all of its time, just five years. But uh, it's nice and clean. Uh, suffering with the same thing in the tram lines and there's another patch in the corner. But the yield with no nitrogen is, is 7.3 tonnes. Um, we have, it, we did invest in a drainage scheme in this last year. We put some footage of that up last year and uh, it was mole cloud but uh, no very pleased with that so far um, shows uh, that it that this sort of regenerative with no nitrogen reasonable yields are possible but everything has to be right This is the first pass for my yen. Two nibbles out. Cut two of yen trials. partnered with the chemical company BASF as part of their real results circle to conduct field scale fungicide trials. This year we are trialling their products at T1 and T2 versus a single T1 application and in the Agronomy Max we are also trialling a Folia N product Poly N. One of the great advantages of combine yield monitors, especially the cloud-based versions, is that they really enable farmers to conduct trials on their own farms. Here you can see the results of the fungicide trial. The PolyN application appears to have given a benefit of 0.1 tonnes a hectare, a cost of £75 for a benefit of £18. The fungicide trial, however, shows a 0.3 tonne improvement for a double fungicide application, a benefit of £54 for a cost of £32 per hectare. The other trial we were running is for the live wheat programme. Here, I'm interested in whether old organic varieties or modern varieties are better in a low input system. Although the Wakelin's YQ looked best, trials demonstrated the mo modern varieties, Xdays and Siskin, which is the control, both outperformed it. Interestingly, the Siskin Xdays mix appears to have yielded the best of all. Now, before all of you think I can't grow crops at all, um, this is uh, conventional, this is Fredericia, which is grown on contract for um, Glencore. And as you can see there, it's doing nine tons a hectare. Um, we'll see if it lasts for the whole field, but it's a good sign when the uh, headlands are yielding that much. Um, just coming in just above 15%, just over 15.2 and uh, it's safe to say it's a pretty thick crop anyway, plenty of straws going to a local beef farmer, uh, not my preferred uh, option but we are planning to use the funds generated to pay for a compost application. So uh, there is organic matter going back in, it's not a one way street. Good evening everybody, Friday night and uh, we're still sat in the combine. Uh, we've had a few showers uh, but managed to keep going so that's a bit of a relief. 
and uh, yes things are going quite nicely so uh, previously I talked about how expensive compost was and whether you know I really thought it was worthwhile and whether it was better just to rely on cover crops in order to get the biological cycle going so the reason that this field is so interesting is because we did uh, last year the um, combine map was showed the far end of the field was particularly thin uh, it was growing beans it was pretty poor and uh, so this after harvest we had some compost available but we concentrated most of our compost on a poor area so I think it got as much as 40 tons a hectare uh, so the whole field got 20 but that particular bad area got 40 anyway uh, it'll be interesting to see what the yield map uh, shows it's probably too early to tell at the moment um, as far as the computers go but it will be interesting to see and that is one of the nice things about uh, this sort of level of technology as far as what the screens can offer us um, is that it just enables us to sort of do on-farm trials and see the yield map and so we can see whether our decisions with the compost has made a difference and as you can see I don't know, we can see it we're selling the straw for it to a local uh, beef farmer and he's uh, picked it up so it's good that it's been picked up one of the things uh, my father one of his favorite expressions is selling straw is like giving the giving up the freehold of your farm until the other person picks up the straw so it's really good when you see them taking away straight away so there we go on farm trials and uh, as I showed you earlier we've combined yen and also the organic live wheat trials so plenty of uh, trials data coming up in the future